Yeah, so um, I told you um, who I am. Unfortunately, you realize that I'm speaking English. My Latvian is more than limited, so I hope you don't mind. But I thought you prefer English than German, because otherwise I would think half of that you wouldn't understand. We have that long, long, long words. You do not want to listen to those. So, I, I should go on the red stage. It's cool. Do I feel cooler over here? Yes. So, um, what I'm going to talk about is personalization. Um, personalization, um, I'm not sure if you do have children. Well, I do have a lovely little daughter. And I want to talk um, a, a little about a typical day in my life. If you do have children, you know what we are facing today. So, that obviously, that is me. That is my daughter. Well, I asked her for the permission to show that picture wherever I'm traveling across the world. I finally got that permission. Well, I did have to bribe her. I do not tell you what um, uh, was the present for that. But what you can see is there is a digital native, obviously my daughter, and a digital immigrant. Now, what we are doing today is, of course, we do have conversations. We are talking to each other. But what we are doing is we are using different um, platforms. We are using WhatsApp. We are using Facebook. We are using Facebook. Messenger. We are um, exchanging SMS. Well, we are calling each other. We are using the landline. We are using the mobile phone. At the end of the day, obviously, we are also seeing each other, uh, other so we also have uh, physical meetings. Now, well, I do not know about the other channels like um, um, Snapchat and other ones that my daughter is using right now. She doesn't want to um, have my, um, my appearance over there. However, what I want to talk about is what we are having is one conversation using different um, devices, different platforms. We are using a telephone, we are using the mobile phone, uh, like I said, the, the fixed line. We are using the um, computer, we are using... Um, even um, um, smartphones, um, uh, different applications over there. But at the end of the day, what we have is one conversation. And why do I start with that? Because you are experiencing that in your real life. That is what happens today. Um, can companies, can they act accordingly? Can they have a seamless conversation across different communication channels and different devices? They cannot. What do you realize very frequently? Somebody is being a target of a marketing campaign. Somebody is then contacting a company. They are not aware that he's being a target of a marketing campaign. Or that somebody is raising a complaint and he's calling in afterwards. They are not aware about that complaint. So what we have in our private life, I think that is setting the pace for the expectations of the customers when they are interacting with companies. So. Well, is that brand new? No, it's not. That is, uh, I would say, evolution out of the last maybe five, maybe ten years. Is that coming to an end? Not at all. It will go on changing. When we look at trends, we foresee from Genesis a lot of trends that will be impacting your relationships with your clients and your prospects. And I do not want to go over all of that. I do not want to talk about IoT, and I do not want to talk about um, artificial learning, uh, machine learning, um, robots. I do not want to talk about all of that. Let me just take, uh, pick out two of that. And one thing is hyper-personalization. So what is hyper-personalization when you differentiate that to personalization? Well, personalization, for example, is that um, company, they got aware that I might be interested in a product of them. So I received an email by them. However, it was not really personalized. The only personalized thing was the content that they did try to sell me something based on my behavior. But how did they address me? Dear Mr. Mrs. Kauk. Well, that was not really personalized, right? So, but hyper-personalization is when you know really who the person is that you are talking to, who you are interacting with, and that you understand the context of all the information, of all the interactions that uh, has been happening. Now, what is enabling that? Big data. Obviously, we are talking for years and years and years now about big data. Um, I think we are now in that stage where finally, after collecting that data, we are looking for, but how can we make the best use out of that? So these are the most relevant trends that we see currently. Now, let's take a look at what does that mean for companies? Um, 
we see that big, big impact by the digitalization. Digitalization is also enabling you to collect big data. What we see, digitalization is changing the way how people are communicating. It is changing the expectations of the customers. By the way, am I talking too fast or is it okay? Everything's fine? Great, thank you. Um, so, but it's also opening up the door for disruptors. And you heard about disruptors, well, it's in everybody's mouth. Disruption is happening ev uh, everywhere. And I do not only want to talk about the Ubers of the world or Airbnb, but you see disruption nearly everywhere. It's in the banking, it's in the insurance industry, it's um, also in the telco and utilities industry. Now, that does mean for the companies, they do have to review their business models in order to stay profitable in uh, the future times. Now, having said all of that, um, what you realize is customer touch points are increasing and customer journeys, they are crossing different devices and different applications. What we see is that a customer journey can in, um, um, involve multiple um, contact points. Um, what we see with the companies that uh, we are dealing with and that I'm advising on is um, they do have all that touch points, but they are siloed organized, right? So they do have a department for customer service. They do have a separate department, obviously, for marketing. Sales somehow is a, diff um, a separate department, but also customer service. Of course, they shall sell. And then they do have branches sometimes. Well, they should sell over there, but maybe not give too much customer service. But everything is absolutely siloed in two ways, technological as well as organizational. Now, if you don't think that is real life, let me show you a real life example. So that is um, from an assessment I did do with a, a bank in Belgium. And they didn't believe me that it is hard for them to manage and control the communication. And we just sat down and I just asked them, how is your customer? How is he communicating with you? And what we ended up with is something like this. So this is real life. The customer is using different devices, different communication channels to reach out to different departments within a company. But not only reaching out for departments in the company, the same is happening vice versa. The company is reaching out for that customer. Marketing campaigns, emails being sent out, um, SMS campaigns or voice campaigns, um, uh, outbound calls campaigns. Now, if you see that picture, you can immediately realize how hard that is to manage and maintain that if you do not have a way how to integrate and understand the communication that is um, going across the different channels. So that is today's reality. The other reality that we see today is the power of the customer. In fact, I love that because I'm also a customer, right? Um, now, digitalization is giving me very, very new chances. In the earlier days, how was that when I was unhappy with a customer? Well, I could write a letter to somebody. Hey, nobody did reply. In fact, I remember my letters to United Airlines when they really sucked. Nobody did come back to me until I um, did send out a third time a letter and that was to the board of directors and then I got um, a letter back uh, where they were saying, hey, um, excuse uh, us, um, we know there are other competitors outside, um, but we would love to keep you as a customer. Am I still flying United? No, for 10 years now, I'm not any longer flying United, right? So the customer is empowered. The customer does have um, tools that makes it so easy for, for him to look for best offers. What is the best service? So not only looking for prices, but also considering where am I treated not in an anonymous way? Where do they consider I'm an individual and I'm important for them? And what we see is customers today, they can make or break a company. We see the power they have when they are raising shitstorms on social media channels and that can easily damage a brand and damage a company. So that is uh, a change that is not happening tomorrow, that is already happening today. Now, 
when I talked about disruption, and I cannot um, show all that um, disruptors that we see in the different vertical markets, but I just did take one example of banks. And I can promise to you, I will find the same disruptors in the insurance industry. I will find the same uh, in, uh, disruptors in uh, telecommunication and also in utilities. So what we see is um, these disruptors, they use new technologies. They use the digitalization. Where they are brilliant is they do have a broad understanding of the individual customer's needs. And that is what traditional companies, what they do not use today. They are staying in old behavior. They are just using, hey, this is the um, channel that I offer to you. Reply back to me on that channel. Don't go to the right and don't go to the left. Disruptors are so crazy successful and they are changing the whole world. Um, so what we see, it's um, now it's time for a change. And um, time for a change, let me um, also give you some personal experiences. I always love um, to use personal experience. I hope you can identify yourself with that. Um, why are personal relationships so important? Well, you know, well, you realized I'm German, so we love cars. We love drive high speed on the Autobahn. If you ever come to Germany, feel free to contact me if you would love to have a deep flight um, at 250 on the German Autobahn, right? So I just most recently, I got my new Audi. Well, the new Audi I purchased, well, in my whole life, I had Saab, I had um, Volkswagen, I had Mercedes, I had BMW. I never had such a good and personalized relationship with a car brand as I had with Audi. They were proactively communicating with me. They were inviting me. Your car needs to be maintained. It needs to be serviced. When my leasing was end of life, they were reaching out for me, giving me the greatest and the latest news of the new developments. That is why I'm staying with that brand. You may like other brands more. That can be um, Seat, Skoda, um, or whosoever, right? But what I want to describe is if I do have a personal relationship and a personal belonging to a product, a brand, or a company, then I'm more loyal and I'm staying with that brand and that company. So that is about the cars. I know we Germans are crazy about cars. Um, let's take another example. Uh, another example is... Another example is, well, you may like the iPhone, you may not like the iPhone. First, I was a hater of the iPhone. I did not really want to be pushed into a, a platform and everything needs to be integrated, right? Um, until I went, um, um, I think something like six years ago um, to the States, that was the time of the iPhone 4. And the first time I did just play a little with the iPhone over there. And then I realized, wow, this is really um, not only cool, but this is something that me as an old guy easily um, can deal with and um, um, use that uh, iPhone in the smartest way. Now, what happened afterwards? Is it only me who has an iPhone? No, not at all. Well, my daughter, she loves always when I get the newest iPhone because she gets the old model. Um, my wife, she has um, the iPhone. Um, I have the iPad. Well, I'm not using that anymore. Um, but anyway, I have the iPad staying on the same platform, staying with Mac. Um, and now, um, staying with Mac, I do have um, the newest company computer. Well, I decided not going for a Dell, but I wanted to have a Mac. Why is all of that? Because I somehow have a personal relationship with my iPhone, right? I love how intuitive it is to work with, and I like the service of Apple. If you ever had the chance um, to um, get your um, Apple device service, well, that is a really personalized um, experience. Let's take another example. Do you know Amazon over here? Yeah? Okay. I personally, I love Amazon. Um, I'm traveling really a lot, 60-70% um, of my time I'm traveling, so I'm um, sitting frequently in the planes and I'm using that times for reading. So I started in buying all my books at Amazon. That was perfect, right? And at that point of time, I realized they are doing a cool job. They are offering me what is similar to the last books that I did read. So I extended that. The next products that I bought over there, there were cameras. And then with the cameras, they did not only, uh, well, uh, have a good um, deal on that one, but they were proposing additional products to that camera. So I, um, all the, um, um, the additional 
things that I use with my Canon with my EOS I purchased at Amazon because they propose that fits perfectly together and other customers they do have great experience with that. Well the latest things that I um, bought at Amazon was a wash machine and a, a lawn mower, right? Which typically I would not have considered Amazon for deploying that things. But what it shows is uh, it is so convenient for me to purchase everything on an uh, Amazon and they are treating me like an individual. Now let's come to the last thing. Um, see, I'm 55 right now. Okay, um, so when I started working, well, I was a little younger and um, I had a bank and that was German Post Bank, right? Until three years ago, I had the same bank. I did not change it, right? I was lazy, I was boring. And then I realized they are doing a poor job. They are just sending out uh, letters um, to my home and just proposing, hey, here is a new loan, here is a new mortgage, um, here's something about an investment. That would have gone to all the other households beside me. There was nothing that really attracted myself. Did I have any benefit of having over 30 years relationship with them? Not at all. And then I realized there is a direct bank that is much better on that. And four years ago, I changed to a direct bank. And just on Friday, I opened up um, an account at uh, a FinTech, um, where um, now um, a robot advisor is taking care of my investments, right? So I'm absolutely open for new ways. Um, if um, somebody's given me an individual um, advice and if they um, treat me in a very, very personal manner. So. Now, some of you might be marketing guys, <coughs> and I'm also a marketing guy. That is what I studied. That is um, how I grew up with. And we were all talking about segmentation. Segmentation is a pretty cool way to differentiate the services that we are delivering, isn't it? Now, when we look at segmentation, I want to show you the difference between segmentation and personalization. What you see over here is, well, I just did choose um, two persons. They are the same age. They are living in the same country. Um, they are both married the second time. Um, both have um, two children. And, um, well, they spent their winter times in the Alps, Alps and they like dogs. Now, in marketing segment, uh, segmentation, we would consider them um, like similar persons. We would treat them the same way, giving the same service levels, offering the same products um, that we um, potentially can sell to them. Now, if you reveal who is behind that, you will, would realize the one that is Prince Charles and the other one that is Ozzy Osbourne. Well, obviously, completely different persons and, well, however you are going to interact with them, you will be more or less successful. I can only tell you that maybe Prince Charles is not that open-minded for digital channels and Ozzy Osbourne, well, if everything is related um, to um, some crazy stuff, some extraordinary stuff, you might be m uh, more successful with that. So segmentation is a good starting point, but obviously it's not about um, ultimately um, personalizing um, your interactions with your customers. Now, what is personal, uh, personaliz personalization? What is the value about? Personalization can help you in three ways. It can help you to increase the sales. It can help you to improve the customer satisfaction or if you're looking for net promoter score, improve the net promoter score. And it can also help you with uh, cost reduction. Um, Cost reduction, basically, first contact resolution, if you ever heard about that, or reduced handling times. Um, that is one uh, of the ways how you can do that, and increasing sales um, is about um, um, conversion rates or being proactively communicating with your customers. I can talk about that slide for 20, 25 minutes. That's not really a challenge for me. That is part of my job. But I see the clock is um, ter uh, um, going down, so I only have six more minutes left, so I do have to speed up a little. If you do have more questions, well, obviously, I will be here the whole event. We can go over that, and I always uh, also will be there at the booth of Adventus uh, at the rear. And um, if you want to have more discussions, uh, we can have a chat on that. But personalization is so important. Now, personalization, um, when, when you think about how can I personalize my relationships with a customer, <coughs> the first things you need to do is you need to look out for what is your strategy. And obviously, there is a lot of companies who are driven now reduce the costs. Obviously, there is a lot of companies who are driven now not only reducing costs, but reducing the staff. 
Um, but some other companies are also looking for how can we increase the sales, the cross-selling, the upselling, and also winning new customers. Well, what I realize being a consultant, that is the goal of nearly every customer doing more with less. So we need to increase the sales and we need to reduce the cost of operations, right? So we need to um, try to merge that somehow when we understand the strategy then um, we need to take a look at the data that is available. So who is my customer? Is he a prospect? Um, is he a customer? Where in the life cycle is he? Looking at the transaction history, looking at the interaction history. We need to look at the voice of the customer, need to consider that. We need to take a look at the behavior. And then out of that, um, you should do a, a predictive modeling um, that is about having um, uh, insights um, in real time, not only historically, but in real time, in order to be able um, to make real time decision making. What is the best action for this customer? That can be once he's reaching out to you, but that also can be before he's reaching out for you. Uh, for you. Um, so that predictive modeling um, that requires some business rules, um, how do you treat each cu uh, customer, deliver that experience, and then be able to um, monitor um, your delivery in real time, but also um, historically. So that is the theoretical part. And I know we consultants, we are pretty well on that one. Pretty cool how, how colorful that looks like. Um, but um, let's be a little more pragmatic. How can you do that in your daily life? So <coughs> what you could do is um, derive from your strategy, derive from who the customer is, and then looking at when is he contacting you, where is he at that situation, uh, which channel is he using then you can decide, uh, and why is he contacting you? And then you can decide um, what is the best way to deliver the experience um, to deal with that customer. And that can be different areas like predictive routing, predictive announcements. This can be self-service, this can be assisted service, um, that can be um, uh, usual um, um, staff in the contact center, but also in sales departments, callback, um, service level, prioritization, and whatsoever. <coughs> Sorry. So it's still very theoretical, I understand. So let's be a little more pragmatic. I just picked up uh, out three examples. Um, let's consider you would have a customer, and I see that frequently in banks, but also insurances, that customers, they are contacting banks uh, regularly at the end of the month to check if the salary has already arrived. Right? That is a very typical behavior. We see that in the insurances where a lot of communication, 20% of the contacts are about status information, about uh, account balances or about um, the, the process, uh, the state of uh, a claim. Um, now, if you understand this is a customer who calls each end of the month, you see that pattern. He's just checking for the account balance. Well, obviously, what is the simplest way how you can personalize that? I do not have to force him to go through a dump IVR where I just ask, hey, press one for sales, press two for service, press three for whatsoever. This is dump. This doesn't make any sense. The first thing I should do is ask that customer, at, uh, either ask him, um, do you want to check your account balance or so having a dynamic menu or be proactive and just uh, announce the account balance um, automatically. Now, in the future times, what you should offer that customer, communicate proactively with him. Why can't I send out an SMS or a proactive notification out of my application, mobile application, to inform him proactively whenever the salary has arrived? And that is creating a, a very, very good experience for those kind of customers, but it's also a very personalized experience. Now, I took another example, and the other example is... Um, that, for example, the um, um, customer would have an open complaint. Man, I'm so often at companies where I'm sitting at that complaint department and um, then they have their transfers from the other agents or um, even in um, sales, um, um, they are transferring to the complaint department. Um, I'm, I'm frequently at branches and then I realize somebody at a branch is trying to sell something to a customer. He's not aware that this customer does have an open complaint. Is that an intelligent uh, way to try to sell something to a customer who does have an issue with you as a company? 
I would not recommend. Better fix his problems at first. So you should be aware about that there is an open complaint. There are different ways how you can deal with that. Um, what you can do is the first thing is root this interaction directly. This can be a chat. This can be um, a call directly to the complaint handling people. That could be that you do an automated readout about the status of the complaint. When will it be solved? And you could also keep that customer informed proactively, again, sending out push notifications or SMS. I can guarantee you the um, experience of the customer will significantly change and he will um, be more loyal than if you try to sell him something um, where he still does have an issue with you a a as a company. Um, then the third thing that I have is um, being proactive. So what, what we see is that a lot of the sales potential um, companies are not addressing. In fact, we made some mystery shopping. We went to different companies on their web pages and we tried to purchase something. We did put it in the basket, right? And then we just um, didn't do anything with that. We didn't finalize um, that um, purchase and we left that company. Did any of that company, did they do anything with that information? They know who we were, otherwise we wouldn't have been able to put something in the basket. Um, they know what we were looking for. Um, they see the value of that. And um, I think if I recall that um, correctly, it was less than 2% of the companies that we tested who just did do something with that information. Well, obviously what you can do is proactively um, when analyzing the pattern of the customer on your web page, what is he looking for? You can offer help to this customer. And help can be service, but help can also be trying to sell something when he's not finding his way and um, not being able to finalize um, his purchase. Now it says my time is up, so I do have to come to an end right now. Sorry. Um, Give me two more minutes. Uh, what is the basics? What is um, the prerequisites um, to set up a personalized relationship? First of all, consider that there are different um, customer touch points that somehow needs to be integrated. Integrated is um, across the different communication channels. And digital um, channels, they give us new opportunities to personalize. Um, and then um, you do have to have a platform that is understanding what is the communication on the different communication channels, but also taking a look at your backend systems, at your CRM system, at your core banking, core insurance system, um, wherever you see customer data or where you would see um, transactions. And if you do have that broad understanding, then um, you can um, use that information for real-time decision making and then you can decide what is the best action to help this customer. And helping doesn't necessarily mean just helping in service. Helping means also make him happy with a new product, selling this customer something. Um, we see there is some more progress. Um, the next step um, after omnichannel is opti-channel. I like marketing slang. So opti-channel basically is about you decide what is the best for you and for your customer, not only giving customer access to each and every channel for each and every service, but you decide what is the best for this customer. I give you a personal um, experience, uh, not a personal, but the best experience I had um, when um, company, when they did set up um, a multi-channel environment, they didn't distinguish the different services. So I would even be uh, able to use video as a channel for an address change. Does that make sense? Obviously not. This is the most um, um, expensive channel and obviously you should segment what are the services, what are the customers that you want to reach out on what channel. So that is what OptiChannel is about. Um, personalization in summary, what you should consider is, um, I ask you to keep three things in mind. It needs to be tailored to the customer. Well, everybody is saying in the middle of our, all our activities, there is the customer. When you dive a little, div uh, dive a little deeper, you will realize, well, that is the marketing what we are saying to the outside, right? But uh, only a few companies are really putting the customer in the middle of all their activities. But do we need to exceed constantly the customer's expectations? No. No, we don't need to. What we need to do is we need to meet 
the customer expectations. We do not have necessarily to overachieve. That would be a waste of money and waste of investments. Giving you two examples on that one, two world-class companies in customer satisfaction. One is Emirate Airlines and the other one is Ryanair. Do they have anything in common? Well, they are meeting the customer expectations, right? So you do not always have to overachieve um, customer expectations. Um, the second thing is um, utilizing the content, uh, understanding the context of um, conversation, and that across different channels, across different databases, across different um, data sources, and use that for real-time decision-making, but also um, to be proactive. So finally, when you set up a, a silo-less environment, and siloless doesn't mean you do have to refurbish your organization, but you need to have a communication flow and you need to have merged channels in order to be able to understand a conversation across the different channels. So that is the three things that I want to keep you in mind. And last but not least, hey, start to walk before you learn to run. I'm dealing with so many companies, they want to go in that area, we want to personalize, and then after two years I'm meeting them again, where are you? Well, we do have to analyze at first, we do have to um, test that, we do have to have a pilot on that. They won't be the fastest uh, one, they will be beaten by the disruptors, I can promise to you. So start with small projects, start with small services, maybe small parts of the organization, learn and out of that then distribute that to the whole company. So that was it. Sorry for consuming a little um, um, too much of your time. Thank you very much um, for um, listening to me.